There's a chance you might have experienced this before when booking a plane ticket. Picture this, you're planning a vacation on the other side of the world. You've planned your activities, scoped out all the good eats. It's now time to book a flight. Just as you're about to pay for the flight, you notice a little box above the checkout button that asks if you'd wish to donate a few bucks towards an environmentally friendly cause, or if you'd like to offset your flight. You may be a little confused and maybe even a little skeptical. Can a few dollars really make a difference? Where's my money going? As the world turns towards a more sustainable future, businesses are looking for innovative ways to reduce their carbon footprint and adopt more environmentally friendly practices. In order to join the move towards sustainability, many essential businesses that currently rely heavily on carbon intensive operations, such as airlines, have to get a little more creative. What options are out there for companies like this? And what does this all have to do with that little checkbox on a checkout page? I'm Tara Overholt, and today on Powering Journeys, I'm learning all about carbon offsets. So what are carbon offsets? An offset represents the reduction, removal, or avoidance of greenhouse gas emissions measured in tons of CO2 equivalent from a sector or region not subject to a regulatory requirement. Whoa, 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 hold up. That's a little complicated. Let's rewind a bit. All right, so let's start a little simpler and work our way up. What are carbon offsets? Or I guess I can think of it like how I would explain it to my grandma is, I guess, um, so a carbon offset measures, you know, the change or the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions that occurs from a voluntary action taken to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's Chelsea Erhardt, a carbon offset expert and environmental products trader at Elbow River Marketing. As we mentioned, there are a lot of essential industries that may find their direct attempts at reducing their carbon footprint to be quite ineffective. Bounded by the constraints of technology, industries like air travel, sea travel, and long distance freight that we rely on directly or indirectly on a daily basis tend to emit a ton of greenhouse gases in their operation. Sure, these businesses can switch to sustainable packaging materials, aim to use high efficiency lights, or perhaps even switch to those co-processed fuels we learned all about. But what if a company wants to do more? This is where that reduction in greenhouse gas emissions that Chelsea mentioned comes into play. What if there was an organization with a project that say, reduce the amount of emissions in a community that uses traditional wood burning stoves with high efficiency, low smoke stoves? Lowered carbon emissions, less smoke inhaled, updated hardware. All of this sounds great, except this organization needs funding to keep this project going. Now say a hypothetical emissions intensive business comes along, looking to do more for the environment. They might be limited in the ways they can reduce their emissions within their operations. But what if they invested some of their revenue into this high efficiency stove project? With investment from the business, the organization with the project can help more communities upgrade their cooking hardware, resulting in a greater reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, thus helping offset some of the emissions created by the carbon intensive business. Of course, high efficiency stoves aren't the only offsets you can invest in. Let's take a look at what other types of offsets are out there. Yeah, so we like to think of carbon offset types in terms of four main buckets. So the first bucket being nature-based, and so this would be like soil sequestration and improved forest management. The second bucket being technology-based. So this would be like renewable energy, HFC reduction, landfill gas, and then household devices, which are typically projects in some of the least developed countries in the forms of solar cook stoves or solar water purification. And then the last one is the removals, and these are the really fancy ones from direct air capture or afforestation. It all sounds so simple, right? A little too simple, but not to worry. There are steps in place to make sure that the project you're investing in is making a real impact. Yeah, so a carbon offset is uh, a very specific thing. It's, it's verified according to an approved protocol and then issued on a registry. And how that happens is initially someone may have an idea for a carbon offset project could be a private forest. They need to look for a protocol that is going to work for their project. Think of a protocol as a recipe. It is the steps and the data required to make a carbon offset. So once that's been identified, a protocol on a registry, the project developer will make a project plan, which lays out what they're going to do to ensure that they follow the protocol. 
At that point, the project crediting period starts. During that time, there is very careful monitoring and reporting to ensure that all of the appropriate data is collected. At the end of the project period, the project report is written. The project report is what happened. You then hire a third party verifier who's going to look and see, did you do exactly what you said you were gonna do according to the protocol? So comparing the project plan to the project report to find out the change occurred and that it's measurable and quantifiable. If they pass their third party verification, then the project developer can issue the offsets on the third party registry and they're available for sale at that point. So in simpler terms, before an organization can sell an offset credit for their project, the project has to go through a series of third party checks and balances in order to have their plan approved and have their emissions reductions quantified and verified. All of this is done in an effort to ensure that money is going to worthwhile causes, causes that can build a better future for the world we live in. However, despite these checks and balances, the topic of carbon offsets is still shrouded in controversy. Are there questionable projects that slip through the cracks? Then there's the issue of who's buying these offsets? Do they care whether the projects are impactful or are they simply choosing the most affordable option just to say they're trying? Is anything being done to improve the system? I think the main thing is that the industry is working really hard to bring people's attention to the fact that not all offsets are created equal. There are certainly some offsets that have questionable additionality. For example, they may be claiming fuel switching in a jurisdiction that already has a carbon tax on fuel. And so, you know, that's kind of double counting. And the other aspect is not only what is the quality of the offset you're buying, but also what kind of claims are corporates making? So the organization that's really rising to the top there is, you know, science-based targets. And they're saying you need to look at this pathway to net zero and have a plan to how you're getting there. If you're a company that's just saying, I have these emissions, I'm gonna go buy the cheapest offset I can find that may or may not be additional and retire that against my emissions, you know, the industry is starting to finally stand up and say, that's not carbon neutral, that's greenwashing. And so what we're seeing is a lot of really smart people getting together that have been in this industry for you know multiple decades and saying, these are the principles we need to follow, not only with what offsets we create and list on these registries, but also with how we use them and how we make the claims, because we have a goal now. We're trying to get to net zero and just retiring any offset against any claim with no real plan is not going to work anymore. So yes, it's true. The system isn't perfect. It can be taken advantage of by both sides of the coin, but people are starting to wise up. Businesses that look to make meaningful changes by investing in offsets should make sure that the projects they're investing in are also making meaningful changes. Businesses that don't care, well, the organizations that do, the customers that do, they're starting to demand that you do as well. Knowing all of this, I was curious as to how Parkland was getting involved with carbon offset projects. Are we doing the right thing? What kind of projects are we investing in? One of the initiatives that we're currently looking at getting involved in would be an afforestation project in Alberta. So this is actually working with a company that plants trees, help funding them to increase their afforestation activities in Alberta. Now, why is this important? Afforestation is a particularly interesting project type because it does not match the investment horizon the same way that other projects do. Because when you plant a tree, the incremental growth in the beginning is so small that the number of offsets created is very tiny. And so if you were doing the investment purely for um, based on project financing economics, you would never do it because the time horizon is so long and the payback is so long. So why would we get involved in this? When you think about a carbon offset, within the nature-based bucket, there's two more buckets. And one is avoiding. So avoiding is when you're avoiding creating emissions, so not cutting down trees. But then there's one where it's actually removal, and that's when you're actually taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. So as we approach net zero as a, you know, globally, the avoidance credits are gonna become less important because it's gonna be net zero. So we're already gonna be avoiding lots of emissions. What's gonna be really important are the actual removals, taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. And that's why afforestation, so planting trees, creating forests is so important because it's removing the CO2 that's already out there. It's really making that big impact. And so removals tend to be very expensive. One, because planting a tree in 2022 and waiting 
60 years for that offset is not an activity that is really lends itself well to conventional project finance. You know, it really takes someone with a mission that wants to remove CO2 from the atmosphere to get these projects done. You don't see many afforestation projects and certainly not in Alberta. It's thrown around a lot, this concept of planting trees to clean the air. Some may think it's a little too simple and some may see it as too little, too late. But in the scope of the future, as we near our goal of net zero, the little trees we've planted decades back will play their role in cleaning up the environment that we and our loved ones live in. Maybe you've made all the sustainable changes that you possibly can in your life and you're looking to do more, or maybe you're new to all of this and you're not sure what you can do. How do you take part in carbon offsetting? Yeah, I mean, a big initiative that we have in Parkland um, that's really only just begun is to offer our customers at all levels the ability to participate in the carbon offset market, which I think is really exciting because carbon offsets are really all about reputation. You know, do you trust the person that you're buying them from? Do you believe that the project really created a change that you can feel confident you're making a difference? And I think Parkland's a trusted partner for many individuals and companies already in the fuel space. And so it's a good extension to do that in the carbon offset space. So on the very lowest level, you can participate using the Journey app. You know, those are the customers coming and buying items at our convenience stores or fuel at our stations. And then on a higher level, we're offering those to our wholesale customers as well. Card locks will receive an offer on a cents per liter or cents per gallon. And then there'll be more bespoke offers for our wholesale customers. Customers that purchase items from our convenience stores or service stations are able to collect points. With those points, they may decide to redeem them for a chocolate bar or carbon offset, bag of chip or carbon offset. And it's been interesting for me to see the customers have been selecting carbon offset. And so we work with our Journey Rewards team and then retire those carbon offsets in the name of the Journey Rewards program. And customers are then able to go online and see that those offsets have been retired in the name of the Journey Rewards program. So if you're collecting points on the Journey app, maybe you consider spending some of those on carbon offsets. Of course, the Journey app isn't the only way you can get involved. As perspectives change and the demands for sustainability grow, more and more businesses are looking to offer opportunities for customers to contribute to carbon offset projects. Remember that little checkbox on the airline's checkout page? Well, hopefully now you know what it's for. But as always, it's important to do your research and make sure that you're helping causes that make a positive difference.